Hello everyone. My name is Swagat Pradhan, Business Development Executive at Advantage Learning. Today we welcome you all. Thanks for showing your interest in one-day workshop in machine learning in oil and gas. So before we start the actual workshop, let me give a short brief of our Advantage Learning. Advantage Learning is a training and consultancy firm aimed at guiding the students and professionals with in-depth knowledge of oil and gas industry. We are founded in May 2020. We have a team of 10 plus experienced oil and gas domain consultant. More than 5,000 plus participants from 40 plus countries till date. Flexible in providing customized and unique training expert client requirements. So till now we are conducted 10 plus digital oil and gas courses. And through our courses, we had our students and professional to achieve their dream job. And you can see the achievements. These are the students who got placed in their respective companies, like, like Ketan Bisekar, placed at Manan Oil and Gas Company as a data scientist. Coming to the next slide, as you can see here also, students were uh, selected as data science intern at ADP Vista. So as you can see, more than 500 plus students were assisted in obtaining their ideal employment through Advantage Learning. That's all about Advantage Learning. Let me introduce to our instructor for today's workshop, Mr. Jayesh Charar. He is a highly qualified and skilled data scientist, expertise in engineering mathematics, reservoir and production engineering. Numerical simulations, oil and gas machine learning algorithm, deep learning, time series analysis, predictive maintenance, and predictive analysis. He is a great public speaker, presented and talked on several webinars and workshops in many universities across the globe, and many platforms like Analytics Vidya and Advantage Learning. That's all from our side. Jay, yes, sir, the mic is yours. Yeah, thank you, Swagat, for a quick introduction. Am I audible to all? Yes, sir, you are able. Okay, let me share. Yes, this. yes. Okay. So is my screen visible? Yes. Great. So yeah, uh, we will talk about, uh, today we will talk about basically machine learning in oil and gas industry, or you can say um, in complete way, machine learning is a part of data science itself in oil and gas industry. So we will talk about what exactly these terms are that I'm using and how, as I hope everybody knows data science, right? We have heard about this particular name because it is, you can say, have been used a lot in all the industries nowadays, right? With the rise of chat GPT, everybody knows about AI, artificial intelligence, data science, machine learning, right? So how we can use this particular technology, instead of technology, I will say it as a tool, how we can use this particular tool to increase our efficiency as a petroleum engineer in oil and gas industry. Okay. So we'll start with, okay, let me also connect to my pen because we are going to write a, a lot of things. So first of all, first thing for, uh, comes first, what, what is data science? What is data science? So here, you know, in the screen, if you can see, you are able to see a Venn diagram, right? Where on my left hand side, there are uh, where on my right hand side, there are things like mathematics, stats, visualization, EDA. Everybody knows about this, right? And on my left hand side, there are these particular names: deep learning, machine learning, and artificial intelligence. These again, I will tell you what exactly these are. But in a way, in a simpler terms, if we talk about your data science is nothing but uh, the combination of both of these things. And again, if we talk about AI, ML, and DL also, these are also nothing but mathematics and statics, uh, statistics with some uh, fancy names and with some fancy operations. In the hood, if you will go, in the hood, if you will go inside these particular names, AI, ML, or DL, you will only find mathematics, basically matrix operations. Matrix, everybody knows matrix, right? Yes or no, guys? The session need to be a 
more yes. interactive so that it will be beneficial for me as well as you guys okay matrix. we know matrix right we know matrix yes. we also know differentiation and let me add a little bit flavor of coordinate geometry also so if we talk about ai ml dl or data science i in a wrap i can say that it is nothing but mathematics and statistics with some fancy operations and a lot of computation a lot of basically calculations right and also data science basically data is also coming here right so this mathematics and statistics we are to do these particular things on what thing on this particular data and by using this data science what we are going to do for example let's take that okay this is my data data or something I'm not mentioning what exactly this is data i will apply data science tools ds and from this particular data i will get a output that output will be basically my some of the meanings meanings insight or you can say some useful information we are getting from this particular data so this data that we calculated was uh, you can say a lot of <coughs> a lot of data accumulated together you don't know anything about this particular data by using this particular tools we will be able to get meaning some insights or some very useful information from this particular data okay and as i said this data science is made up of your ai ml and dl and your dl is a subset of ml dl is basically deep learning right deep learning basically the algorithms that deals with neural networks neural networks are basically neurons the structure that we have in our brain so similar artificial type of neurons are present or those neurons are nothing but mathematical operations basically simple functions y equal to mx plus b equation of straight line we have everybody we have seen right so inside of these particular neurons this thing is only going on with some little bit more complicated mathematics calculation yeah guys if you have if you oh, don't yeah. have any doubt you can mute yourself okay so deep learning basically algorithms dealing with neural networks okay machine learning machine learning are your simple algorithms simple algorithms that were there in the industry since 1950 so your ai is there since 1950 or beyond that also 1940 also and all of you guys have used ai in some sense or all of you guys have studied ai during your high school or during your 9th or 10th standard we all know right we all know that okay let's take an example from a coordinate geometry there is this my x axis and there is my y axis and let's say we have two points here in this x y plane and if you guys know the coordinates of these two points can you tell me the equation of this particular right if you knows the coordinates of these two like uh, uh, the coordinates of these two points right so we need the equation you you will be able to make the equation right if you know the coordinates of these two points a and b yeah. and once you know the equation of this particular line let me extend this line also or color so if i extend this particular line like this and now if i tell okay i am assuming that this a point my x coordinate was 2 and for my b point my x coordinate was 6 similarly for a point my y coordinate was let's say 3 and for my uh, for my b point my x uh, y coordinate was 7 now if i tell you that okay you know the equation if i ask you that okay what will be the my value of y what will be my value of y when my x is equal to 8 you will be able to tell that right you will just put this x is equal to 8 in your equation that you have just form y equal to mx plus c 
by putting this particular eight, you will be able to tell me why. This exactly is, this particular thing exactly is your machine learning, deep learning or AI. This thing is only happening, okay? At the base level, this thing is only happening. So basically we have data, here we have data, A and B we have data. And from this particular data, we tried to find out a relationship between my Y and X, right? And once I know my relationship between my Y and X here, it is a straight line. So it is Y equal to MX plus B. So basically I have data for my Y and X. From that particular data, I was able to derive my M and B, right? And once I know the values of this M and B, I, will, I was able to predict something new. So from previous data, this previous data, I was able to get meaningful, useful information that how my Y and X are related with each other and how by using new, uh, by applying new value of X, I will get the prediction for my Y. And now this Y and X can be anything in any particular industry, in oil and gas industry, if I talk about that, okay. Of, uh, let, let's take an example from production engineering. If I talk about that, okay, my X are my production parameters. Basically, my you can say water injection rate and Y is my oil production rate. So what will be my oil production rate if my water injection rate is something? And if I have enough data for both of these particular things, I will be able to get a relationship between them without using any correlation, right? So this particular thing is basically your data science by using all these tools, AI, ML, DL, and math statistics, visualization of data is also important. All these two things, getting some useful, meaningful data or getting some meaningful relation. We can do so guys, please mute yourself, man. Let me mute all of you. So this is your data science, basically. I hope everybody got a rough idea about it. You can write in the chat box, yes or no. Great. Now the question comes, why, why data science in oil and gas industry? Or before that, let's let's arise let's uh, arise one more question before data science because if we have to do data science we have to do some uh we have to do some coding also so why coding it uh, in the first place why a petroleum engineer that is a core engineering subject petroleum engineer why he must learn coding learn coding so basically all of us knows right Industri industrialization 4.0 everybody has heard about industrial revolution 4.0 right so this revolution 4.0 is nothing but use of computers basically digitalizations of all the industries so basically our computers can do all of uh, not all of our work, but can do majority of our work right that is our industry revolution 4.0 and if you have to remain in the, in the industry you should know how to talk with the computers, right? And you guys can say that, okay, I can directly use some simulation software or something. Why should I learn coding? You can use simulation software, but again, that will kind of put you in a situation that, okay, if uh, please enlarge the screen. Okay. I'm not uh, just discussing about it. I'm just reading out. But yeah, when we will be discussing, I will also tell you. So basically, uh, when we talk about we were talking about simulation right but simulation will uh, give you or will kind of take the control from you itself for example if you want to do customize a particular thing customize a particular process in a simulation software you will not be able to do right so instead of doing that if it is always good that you can directly talk with your computer. So basically it was said that uh, uh, if you want to be, if you want to be uh, great, uh, if you want to be successful, you must know three things. If you want to be a successful engineer, no matter which domain you are from, 
you need to have three things right you must know how to communicate with people how to communicate with universe and how to communicate with computers or machines right for people communication skills comes into picture for universe your physics comes into picture and for computers and machine coding come, coding comes into picture so that's why no matter if you are a petroleum engineer or a mechanical engineer it is always good to know coding or to know some particular coding language whether whether it be python c++ no matter what it will be no matter what it will be now coming to our question now why data science in oil and gas industry and as we are talking about data science right machine learning data science so python is the, our preferred language in this um, particular field you can also use c++ and c there but python is used a lot or basically python is used only python and other languages are but yeah python is preferred everywhere that's why main focus of data scientist maybe uh, start uh, starting point will be learning python now why why to well, why data science in oil and gas industry right so the first and foremost point data volume is increasing in all the industry not in only oil and gas industry in all the industry because of advancement of technologies because of a lot of iot sensors being installed in all the phases of a oil well or in all the phases of a reservoir right starting from the first day itself when we <laughs> when we drill our first well in an unknown reservoir there are iot sensors in our drilling road itself that is calculating different different parameters whether it be mwd sensors lwd sensors right so we have lot of data so why not use this particular data right if we have data if we have already collected the data let's make use of it right so that that can help us in improving our efficiency improving efficiency of a particular process right and some of the use cases i will also show or share discuss about you will automatically understand so data volume is increasing here uh, we have ju just seeing the information that okay how data volume is increasing basically recording of data in exploration wells drilling wells logging we are doing well testing data again we are collecting production data is there reservoir data is there a lot of data is there also now these huge data set can be used for training some of the machine learning model for your some complex problem right and as we have a lot of data and these particular models basically there is this rule for ml models or dl models more the data you have it will perform much better right so we have data we just need to do this particular step we just need to identify a problem identify a problem that your given data can solve and after that just playing around with this particular data we can solve this particular problem one of the example here i am telling you 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 all guys knows that okay unconventional resources has been developed a lot in last 10 years right your shale gas after the discovery of shale or after the <laughs> in usa shale oil has been produced a lot until date we don't know exact physics behind shale reservoirs right that's why the simulation the softwares are there but we don't know exact physics so results from that are not exactly great as compared to the results for uh, results for a sandstone or limestone reservoir but if we have enough data from this particular unconventional reservoir we can make our machine learn the physics behind that machine learn basic uh, basically basically telling we can train some of the algorithm that can learn the physics behind the process right and then we can use this particular algorithms for solving our problems this, this was one of the example am i audible to all right can you guys just confirm me advantage yeah so maybe shirjaul okay you have yes, some particular you issue from you have some particular issue from your side no, sir, you audible, sir. okay great so that's why basically data science can be used and major also we can say major reasons major reasons for rise of these particular things ai ml data science ai ml or data science is 
first thing was this only data volume increase in all the industry and second was now earlier in 1950s or 60s we don't we don't have that much computation power our computers were not that good right but nowadays from past you can say after 2011 or 12 there are highly computational gpus because this training of these particular algorithms also requires large computation powers and now we have those powers in form of gpus or parallel processing is, is present there that's why data is there computation is there that's why from the past five to ten years you have seen a lot of a rise in this ai ml field and we need to take advantage in our industry also right so now here let's now discuss some of the roles of data science in petroleum engineering i already have covered the points basically by providing the advanced tools and techniques to analyze large amount of volume of data and solving some particular problem by using this particular data this thing we can do now here comes one particular picture a doubt can arise that okay if petroleum engineer if there is some data scientist right let's say there is some person who has a computer science background it will be easy for him to become a data scientist because he already knew coding he already knew certain techniques it will be easy to become uh, for him to become a data scientist why a petroleum engineer should try or where a petroleum engineer will stand in front of that particular computer science background one so yeah okay your computer science background one may may know coding but petroleum engineers knows the concept of petroleum engineering right and in the same picture if we talk about uh, let's say one of the example if we take this unconventional reservoir only this cs background one will have no idea about even darcy law or something similar but a petroleum engineer with a good grasp of his knowledge will have that particular idea and provided with the tool of data science he will be unstoppable right this cs student will or this cs person will never stand toward a person who knows coding plus who have the core background that's why not only in petroleum engineering again i will talk about all the core engineering here whether it be electrical engineering or mechanical engineering if that particular guys have this particular coding skills or data science skills he will be more important to a company than a simple C, uh, computer science graduate right because he will have his core knowledge also and he will be able to solve the core problems more easily than this particular person because this person if a cs background person has has been hired in some company let's say exxon mobil and he has to solve some particular problem there first of all he had to read the core uh, concepts after that he will be able to understand right on the other end your petroleum engineer will already know all the core concepts you just need to dig into the problem and solve it and also basically that's the main thing here there is nothing the more in this particular slide to discuss now data acquisition what is a data acquisition of first uh, means our first main step basically collection of your data is known as collection of data is known as your data acquisition right and also management of that particular data here we are also see in collection and management of various types of data is your data acquisition and this in oil and gas industries this can be done by your well logs data seismic data production data and reservoir performance data also some other data you can also collect for example we have to use the but uh, seismic images data is also there images data and on those images again you can run your ai basically computer vision is known as the field that deals with images or videos vision is there right so basically we are making our computer to visualize so data acquisition is nothing but your collection and management of various types of data and as i said earlier we are collecting a sheer volume of data right so complexity of this particular data also poses some significant challenges and here again your data science offers solution to these challenges basically your data cleaning techniques 
data integration and validation. Now, again, if I take an example that I have, let's say, uh, data for oil production. Oil production, okay. On my y-axis, oil production is there. On my x-axis, number of days is there, or you can say date is there. I have collected a oil production data from a particular well, right? And there will be decline in oil production, right, with time. Sometimes there are scenarios that there is this particular zero value in oil production, right? Like this, just a rough graph. Now, a petroleum engineer will understand that, okay, this particular oil production is zero. This is not the, uh, this can be a case of shutting of the well, right? Because he knows what exactly is shutting. But any other person will understand that, okay, there is this sudden zero here. Maybe this data is wrong and he will fill this particular zero with the mean of these particular points. He will fill the data like this, right? Understanding my point. So here again, in this particular data acquisition state, again, basically after data acquisition, when we are cleaning the data, our role of petroleum engineering again come into picture. So basically we are understanding both in both ways, role of data science in petroleum engineering, as well as role of petroleum engineering in an oil and gas data science project. Right. Is this point clear to all? Yes, sir. Uh, any doubt till here? No, sir, it is clear. Okay. Other people? Go ahead. Go ahead. It's clear. Great. So that's how combination of both will be unstoppable. Now, next part, again, data analytics comes into picture again. You can say it is a branch of data science. So basically, without using any ML or something, just by visualizing your data, just by seeing your data, we can use data analytics <laughs> to extract many meaningful insights from a data. Okay, again, this different, different stages, data analytics, data science, I will discuss at the last slide itself. But uh, just try to understand. And in context of petroleum engineering, data analytics techniques, such as machine learning, again, machine learning can be a little bit part of data analytics. Statistical analysis and predictive modeling can be used to identify patterns, detect anomalies in data, and forecast reservoir behaviors, right? <laughs> Just give me a second, please. Okay. So yeah, what does these terms mean? So basically we have a particular data, right? Again, this particular scenario L production, what I am telling. And now you want to develop, a, um, basically tell something that, okay, you have to detect shut-ins. I don't know what is the physics behind the shale reservoir. That's what I, said that we have, nobody knows what is the physics behind shale reservoir. But there we can use ML model to know the physics or not ML or DL model. If we have enough of data, your machines can learn physics behind them, behind the processes. Or basically not physics, it will derive a function. So Y is equal to Fx. If we have enough of X, enough of Y, your compu computer will be able to, or your machine will be able to derive this F. So here uh, we are talking about identifying patterns. So we have these shut-in patterns a lot, and I want to develop a particular algorithm that will de detect where shut-in is happening. So it will understand that, okay, these are shut-in, shut-in, shut-ins. So it will be able to identify patterns, right? Detect anomalies. So let's take example for this detect anomalies. Let's assume I have one drill pipe, right? And this drill pipe will have certain lives, a certain life, right? Let's say it have life of 50 kilometers. This 50 kilometers 
<laughs> and this 50 kilometers will mean basically this can go up and down 50 yeah, 50 kilometers time um, not 50 kilometers time 50 kilometer distance okay trip up and trip down but there are chances that it may fail at 35 kilometer it may fail at 40 kilometer and if i have enough data for this particular grade of uh, pipe there are api grades for uh, drill pipe right and if we have enough data for this let's say this is api x api grade x i know there is nothing like api grade x let's assume that this is api grade x and i have enough data for this api grade x that okay if uh, api grade x is going in a certain type of reservoir it will become an LDA after 30 kilometers right or if api x is going inside certain mud property it will uh, become unusable after let's say 35 kilometers this whole information enough information historical data if i have i will be able to detect the anomaly in my new pipe i will tell that okay i am using this api x and i am running i already run 20 kilometers inside the given condition of reservoir and mud how much kilometer how much more kilometers i have left how much more times of trip i have left so by this particular enough historical data, your y equal to fx, again y equal to fx, f will be trained and it will be able to tell me that, okay, five kilometers more are remaining or something like that. So it will be able to detect anomalies. <coughs> or other example is your example of, let's say, there are compressors, right, in different drilling sites. Or in your production uh, sites also, there are compressors, right? So if I have enough data, enough vibrational data of those particular sensors, uh, of those particular compressors, and I also have some data of their breakdown, my ML algorithm will be able to tell me that, okay, after 10 days, or not after 10 days, after a certain time, your compressor is going to break down. You have to do your, uh, you have to be ready according to that. So that is your detect anomalies. And also we will be able to forecast reservoir behavior. Again, the same thing. So again, here we are telling these insights can help us in optimize our drilling and production processes, right? Once because by using data science, we are kind of looking into future, trying to look into future. And once we have some view inside our future, we will be able to plan our drilling activities, production activities, or reservoir management activities in that particular way. And that's why at last this reducing downtime is also there. As a, our example of compressor, if I know that, okay, after 10 days, my compressor is going to fail. I will do my planning that way that, okay, when my compressor is doing, uh, going to fail, my mechanic need to be there or my parts need to be there. So that if it was sudden breakdown, I was not able to know that a breakdown is going to happen. If it is going to take one to two days for uh, repairing this particular compressor, if I know that, okay, after 10 days, don't... Uh, uh, compressor is going to fail this one to two days work can be done in 12 hours or 15 hours reduced downtime right and re downtime more the downtime means more we are losing money and in every particular industry the main motive is money only so by using all these things we are just trying to generate more and more profit now let's talk about some of the use cases some of the ideas how we can use AI ML in oil and gas industry. First of all, predictive maintenance, the compressor example that we just used, that thing is known as predictive maintenance only. We are predicting our maintenance when our maintenance is coming for a given equipment. So here as I uh, written, AI and ML can be used to analyze data from sensors and monitoring device to predict equipment failures when the equipment is going to fail. and from that, we will be able to schedule maintenance, which can help in reduce downtime and optimize production. Great, predictive maintenance, first use case. Second, production optimization. Again, by this particular AI ML, we can analyze production data, right? And we can come up or we can adjust well parameters or production parameters in such a way so that our production behavior or oil production is optimized. Same thing we can do in our drilling and completions also, right? Reservoir characterization, we have enough data of our well low seismic data, production data, we will be able to create more accurate reservoir models. 
and also there is uh, this one particular person in our oil and gas industry itself professional dr shaib mohammed dr shaib i hope some of guys some of you guys may know maybe not know him but he has developed this particular thing known as top down modeling top down modeling so in that particular thing he is using these particular data and little bit of reservoir engineering for doing your reservoir simulations and that particular thing is giving good results so reservoir characterization we can do in drilling we can also optimize different different things by using your drilling sensors we can improve efficiency reduce cost you can also know or forecast your uh, drilling trajectory itself the only thing that you need is data okay and not only data good data good quality data some random trash data cannot help us right because there is this particular proverb uh, waste in waste out garbage in garbage out exactly not waste in waste out garbage in garbage out so if we are throwing some bad data on our model it will give bad result only bad bad that's why we need this particular good data if we have a bad data and in uh, scenarios in practical scenarios there are no chances to have a good data we have to we will always have this particular bad data that we will need to convert into good data by using our engineering concepts by using our engineering concepts so these are some use cases and now some of the more use cases are there risk management you can do by using AI ML. basically if we have historical data we will be able to identify potential safety hazards and reduce the risk of accidents again if we have enough data historical environment modeling you can do water and air quality you can tell or forecast that okay how much i am polluting the environment or doing the things supply chain optimization you can do so basically if we have enough data we will be able to maintain our inventory levels also by forecasting that okay how much a particular thing i'm going to use if i take the example again of that particular drill pipe if i know that okay after two runs my drill pipe is going to be uh going to be what we can say unusable so i will be planning in that particular way and i will order my drill pipes in advance so in in the inventory levels are my okay and there is no again reduction in time uh, down time or basically there will be no you can say disruption in your supply chain okay last use case is your image and video analysis there are many more use cases i have just listed out some so basically by your drone data also basically your images data from drones or whatever things you can take you can identify more anomalies monitor infrastructure improve safety security and more for example if i give you example of one of this image analysis let's assume that there is this particular ring okay in offshore and we have trained the ai model we have trained the ai model that is able to detect crack we have an ai model that is able to detect cracks right and we have deployed this model in a drone instead of going instead of one person going there for doing the inspection this drone can go and take the images or videos of this particular rig or this particular infrastructure and it will be able to detect the cracks and uh, give a final report to end user and user can be anyone manager or someone and he will be able to see, he will he will see and he will decide that okay whether a maintenance is required here or not this is one of your example of image analysis right when many other examples are there for example other example is using this image analysis on your seismic data we have seismic images we will be able to know that whether a fracture is present a fort is present or not in a reservoir right pipeline inspection you can also do computer vision can be used to automate pipeline inspection basically analyzing images to detect anomalies such as corrosion cracks or leak on your pipeline right pipeline can be several thousand kilometers long right so if we have ai model basically a drone that is running some hundreds kilometers that can also provide us this cracks corrosion these data right 
So these are some of the use cases. Again, all the things depends which type of data do you have and how much brainstorming you are doing on that particular data. Here again, some of the list of use cases. Seismic data if we have, so seismic data if we have, such as rope, the rope types in nearby wells, we will be able to predict oil pockets. We can forecast our tra trajectories in drilling that again we discussed. Predictive maintenance again, we have discussed already for drill pipe, pumps, compressor, or anything. EOR screening you can do. Enough historical data for different, different fields if we have across the world. We can tell that, okay, in a given field, which EOR technique should I use? Pressure prognosis you can do basically in a well testing. We shut down our wells, right? To, uh, for example, if a pressure is decreasing inside a well, to maintain the pressure, we need to shut down the well, right? So pressure prognosis basically will tell us that, okay, in how many days my pressure will again reach to X level. So again, if I have enough historical data, it will be able to predict me these particular days. This is a reservoir fluid properties estimation you can do. Selection of artificial lift technique you can do similar as your screening. Inside production again, production forecasting, oil production forecasting you can do or predicting the oil production from op operational parameters you can do some of the use cases again all right these are some ideas use cases you can do the brainstorming you can search the one petro for ai ml in oil and gas you will be able to find a lot of research papers you can do anything you want right so now these are the use cases here i'm just talking about some of the summary of machine learning algorithms so basically, again, instead of looking at this, let me give you, let me open my whiteboard. Let me give you a good, good rough idea about machine learning. Machine learning or deep learning. So let's talk about AI only, right? Now in this AI, these AI use cases can be uh, distinguished into two parts. One is your structured data. It's way too big. One is your structured data. Other one is your unstructured data. The structured data, basically your data that is present inside some tables, CSVs, excels or database these things comes so basically there is a structure of your data unstructured data generally refers to your images audios these are your unstructured data again images example i already told here there can be different different use cases there can be image classification there can be object detection detecting a particular object in the image basically detecting a crack in pipeline or there can be segmentation different different example here again in this particular tabular data again this tabular data will be of two type one is your simple data other will be your time series data time series data so basically Time series is again a different type of, you can say different field itself inside machine learning because there is one dimension of time also. If we talk about oil production, oil production will have, have effect of time, right? That if we are producing from a well from past 50 days, its oil production will be different than from the well that we are producing from past 20 days. So that particular effect of time is there in oil production data, right? So that, that particular data will fall under this time series data. And handling this time series are again different and handling this simple data is again different. Only those, some of the information I have talked about here, some of the algorithms I have talked about there, known as uh, supervised learning techniques. So basically there are two techniques, supervised and unsupervised. So in supervised, as I talked about, y is equal to mx plus c, I talked about, right? Or instead of y equal to mx plus c, I'm writing y equal to fx. So in our supervised, we have both y and x. But in unsupervised, we only have x and machine will automatically find y. 
So I'm just focusing in this particular slide for supervised learning only. And this supervised learning, this time series is again different, uh, different, uh, different thing. And this simple data is again different thing. And these are just the name of some of the algorithms that we use. So in simple data, there is linear regression. Linear regression is again nothing but y equal to mx plus c thing. There are random forest, decision trees, logistic regression. And in time series, there are completely different algorithm because here we have to deal with time dimension also. We have to forecast in future, right? We have time dimension. So this is completely different. And this is also related to your things that you are seeing nowadays, NLP, natural language processing. Basically, one of the example is chat GPT. What is chat GPT is basically generating the sentences, forecasting, right? Same thing we can kind of relate with time series because this NLP started with these things only, RN and LSTMs that we talk about in time series. Again, these are completely different. A lot of uh, discussion can be there. This I'm just showing you for giving a rough idea how you can distinguish. And now, this is our final slide of this particular presentation. How we can, how to be a good data analyst or good data scientist as a petroleum engineer. How you can start. So first step, as I said, you need to learn the coding or you need to learn a tool. That can be Python, MATLAB, R or Excel is also a tool. But as we have to become data scientists, so our first preference will be Python. So learn Python. Once you feel good that, okay, I know basic concepts of Python, now just pick a topic of your choice or pick a textbook. For example, uh, during my learning process several, several years back, I picked LPDEC for reservoir engineering. I knew Python, I picked the LPDEC, and from this LPDEC, what I did, I tried to solve the problems in LPDEC by using Python. Basically, there are problems, right? There are numericals in LPDEC. Try to solve their, them using Python. And also possible at last try to plot the problem. Some X or Y, try to do some plotting also. So that will help you to grow confidence in Python, right? So basically you will be able to solve the things with Python. You will be, become a Pythonic guy at this particular point. So you will implement it <laughs> with Python, right? This is the same thing. Again, the next thing, now pick a problem from the text. For example, from LPDEC, I picked some problem. I picked the material balance equation or I picked the well test analysis or anything you can pick. Do that. Go back to learning again. Once you are good with Python, now this time expand your knowledge to machine learning algorithms, stats, and mathematics also. And uh, I'm assuming mathematics everybody knows, so that will be not uh, that much difficult. But yeah, try to learn a little bit of stats and machine learning algorithms. Now, thing to find, uh, there, as there is this world data, very good data set present online. Use this particular world data and try to think of some problem statement, right? You have data, try to think some problem statement and try to use all the things that we have discussed till here, machine learning, Python and all, to solve that particular statement. And once you are able to solve this particular statement, bam, you are already become a data scientist as a petroleum engineer. Well, and guess data analyst engineer in full flow. So this need to be your complete flow, learning Python, picking up the topic, uh, topic practicing, practicing more, Learning machine uh, machine learning ML DL getting some that uh, particular uh, getting some data or create your own data. There are also th uh, techniques to create your own data. Think of problem statement. Solve that by using all these things, and go on. I iterative process. Right in this way, you can become a good data analyst and as a petroleum engineer. Now I will just quickly share a code that okay how. Uh, real machine learning project or ML project look like. Again, here I have used my wall filled data only. Okay. And my problem statement here is to train a temperature predictor. So I will be using machine learning model to train a temperature predictor that can predict bottom hole temperature using different, different production parameters. So I have used uh, this particular data 
not going into code i'm just showing you how a complete flow or how much time it takes so i have data this particular data from oil field i have different different parameters there is temperature also there is your choke pressure also bore oil volume oil production also all these things are there pressure is also there i will look around the data we'll try to understand because if i'm new and i have thrown some random data i don't know shit about my data right and what I, and i have to use this particular data for solving my problem so i will be you can say that first step is knowing your data itself so i will do that particular thing i will try to know about the data i will probe, uh, try to know about the statistics of data what is my mean standard deviation blah blah again different things we will not go into depth right visualize my data different different plots i will make for visualizing my data how my data is looking how that distribution is looking all those thing i will do okay if there are some out i will clean my data cleaning data basically means if my data is dirty some unnecessary things are present because at the last data is collected by some of the sources right whether it be iot sensors or something else and there are chances that those iot sensors are faulty or there is some you can say fault in your data right fault uh, or you can say data is not good or not expected basically getting a negative value inside your oil production is not expected right so that negative value may be the cause of fault in your uh, iot sensor or fault in human in loop so removing those negative value or filling those negative value with something is your data cleaning again or there is this concept known as outlier you also need to remove them null values basically zero values you have to um, null values are not zero values but the value points where can you please share this jupyter notebook i will show you the complete thing where all these things are already present and i will tell you that particular thing also so we'll uh, clean our data and once our data is all ready we will choose that okay what parameters i have to use so here i am using my downhole pressure and downhole temperature my downhole pressure i will be predicting this downhole temperature right and I, as i know able to see that there is some relationship between downhole pressure and temperature so i will be able to predict this temperature right and at last where is my thing interpolation still going on till this particular point our that thing is still going on data collection i will show you where exactly machine learning or ai comes into picture so ai comes into picture here and if you will see only one two three four line of code is done for training your model this model dot fit and your model will be trained that much it is easy that much it is easy to train a machine learning model and at last you will be able to get the result so if you see here the green points are your actual training uh, are your actual training data the yellow points are your mush model prediction right and your black points are your model prediction for future and your red points are again actual data so i've trained a pretty good model here right and i also only how much data points are there I'll, let me tell you this particular thing i have done only on it will be around 3000 data points now imagine if i have 10000 or 20000 or lakhs of data points how good my model was be right so this is kind of a complete machine learning project and i think that many of you people who don't know about python and all will not be able to understand but yeah this particular thing i just only shared so that you can know that it is not some rocket science or something you just need to be good with your core concepts, mathematics, stats, and you can become a data scientist and also coding. Now about the codes and Jupyter notebooks, uh, you can find all these particular details here. There is my GitHub. Okay, you can find all these particular codes or not these particular codes. Many more codes in my GitHub profile, uh, GitHub repository. So basically, GitHub is used for storing all your codes or basically storing all your projects also you can deploy your projects here so if you go there i will share the link you will be able to see different different repositories there is this gold from jurassic repositories where i have 
written different different codes for different different functionality you can go and check it, check it out if you guys want to i'll share it so here you will be able to find many of the codes so yeah this was about this particular thing any doubts or anything no sir bundle of thanks okay now uh, one more announcement that i want to make at the last is advantage again with petroleum from scratch we are coming with a course with machine uh, with our time series application for energy industry so also this will be a four weeks of course right we will discuss we will start with the base, uh, basic python first uh, first week we will cover python and after that we will jump on to how time series data is different from original data and what are the different different things that you can do with time series and different different again algorithms that can be used in time series so this particular uh, curriculum i think will be shared by you guys shared to you guys on your email profile or something by advantage team so you can look into it here i, uh, I will be teaching this particular course and also if you want to uh yeah many of the things you will be able to find here also on my github so yeah that's it if you guys have any doubt you can ask at the moment regarding to anything not only this particular thing you can ask anything yeah what should be the standard for python for using it successfully in learning ml standard in what sense you are asking you have to start basically with uh, basics right once you have good basics you are able to do certain things right then again it is a iterative process itself with time you will be able to learn more and more advanced python okay how much python do you know that will be my question for some people advanced python can be you say you can say deploying a code can advanced python for some other people advanced python can be something else so you cannot define advanced python mediocre python or something as again i said it is a iterative process in one or two months you will not be able to learn complete python even the people who are working from past five to ten years in python itself or doesn't know complete python or advanced python also if you have any doubts or if you want to have a talk you can also connect with me on my linkedin i will share my linkedin profile also you guys in the chat box this is my linkedin profile and this is my github what is the best technique for hydro fracturing data by using machine learning again khalid data need to be there but after that problem statement what exactly problem or what exactly the application you want to get out of that data that you have to think predictive maintenance yeah there can be a couple of projects you can find on kaggle itself for example predictive maintenance of compressor you will be able to find the data for that on kaggle and also some of the jupyter notebook also there okay then uh, i think if there are no doubts let's conclude the session here uh, it was great interacting with you all guys you've got a great audience so yeah keep on learning keep on growing happy learning if you have any doubts or want to have a chat we can connect on linkedin itself already shared the links great have a great day and See you all guys. Happy learning. Bye. Take